2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And scripture qualifies it here, right? For the weapons of our warfare. Well, who's the R? Who's scripture referring to? Just anybody. Anybody who wants to enter into warfare. Anybody who sees the enemy's kingdom. Anybody who knows to call on the name of Jesus? No, right? 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. So here scripture qualifies it, right? If you're going to war, right? If you're going to be involved in warfare, right? Well, you can't be entangled with the affairs of this life. What's scripture saying, the affairs of this life? You can't be entangled with putting clothes on your back. You can't be entangled about what you're going to eat. You can't be entangled about how you're going to pay your bills. No, it's not what Scripture's saying. Amen. Scripture's talking about being entangled with the love of the world. Loving the world and loving the things in the world. Being entangled with the affairs of this life that control life. Amen. That control the world. Amen. And the weapons of our warfare, they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. They are not mighty alone. They cannot be used alone. They are mighty through God and through God alone. Ephesians chapter 6 teaches us in verse 13, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. And here we see some of the weapons that we are to use in this warfare. And scripture talks about a shield of faith, wherein with you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, amen, which is your offensive weapon. Verse 18 says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. So your weapon in your warfare is praying always with all prayer and supplication. How? In the Spirit. That's why your weapons of warfare are mighty through God. Why? Because it's done in the Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. It didn't say the Word of God, right? It says these high things are exalting themselves against the knowledge of God. And we are to cast down these things. Amen. But a lot of people think that just using the Word of God and just knowing the Word of God and just reading the Word of God and just quoting the Word of God to the enemy is a way to cast down these imaginations and is a way to come against these high things that are exalting themselves. It's not what Scripture says though, right? It says that they're exalting themselves against the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God. Well, how do you get the knowledge of God? And where does the knowledge of God abide? Does the knowledge of, of God abide in Scripture? Well, yes and no, right? You could pick up the Bible, right, and read Scripture, right, and be totally lost. Peter taught us that, right? The unstable and the unlearned, right? They rest with the Scriptures unto their own destruction. So the scripture, right, even though it has the knowledge of God in it, you can pick it up and you don't see the knowledge of God. You don't taste or eat from the knowledge of God. Jesus Christ said, flesh and blood profits nothing. It is the spirit that quickeneth. And the words that they, he speaks unto us, they are spirit and they are life. Scripture says, the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit. The natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit. They are foolishness unto the natural man. To have knowledge and understanding, right, takes revelation from the Spirit of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And Scripture teaches us this. And it's pounded through the Scripture many times, right, that if you want to get knowledge and you want to gain understanding of God, and of his kingdom, then 
You need to fear the Lord. Because when you fear the Lord, it's the beginning of knowledge. When you fear the Lord, well, it's going to motivate you to do and not do certain things. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 29. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord. So here scripture is teaching us, right, that to fear the Lord is a choice. It's a choice that you make. It's a choice of your heart. It's a choice of your will. It's a choice of your soul before the Lord, to fear the Lord. And Scripture says because they hated knowledge, they hated understanding, then they chose not to fear the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So scripture teaches us, right, that if you're going to perfect holiness, if you're going to live separated, if you're going to live consecrated, if you're going to come out of the world, if you're not going to touch the unclean thing, right, you're going to do it under or through the fear of God. You're going to make a choice and you're going to fear the Lord. Well, I fear God. What? I fear the judgment of God. I fear the judgment of God upon these things. Therefore, I'm going to cleanse myself. How? By surrendering my will to the Lord and surrendering my desires to the Lord. Amen. And in doing so, right, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. It's a choice, right? And those who don't want to perfect holiness and those who don't want to separate themselves, right, well, they choose not to walk in the fear of the Lord and they choose to abandon knowledge. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. So scripture says, oh, you better fear. Well, fear what? Fear the Lord, amen. And fear the judgment of the Lord. And fear those things that God detests. And fear those things that God says separate yourself from. Because it's possible, right? Though you have a promise of making it to eternity, though you have a promise of making it home, you should come short of it. You can come short of it. Why? Well, because you didn't fear the Lord and you didn't separate yourself. That's why scripture says, fear him. Amen. And in fearing him, you're going to perfect holiness. And in fearing him, you're going to get the knowledge of the Lord and the knowledge of the kingdom. Why? Well, because by fearing the Lord and separating yourself and walking holy, you allow the Spirit to live in you. And you keep yourself in the love of God. And therefore, God is with you. And therefore, God will teach you. And therefore, God will open up the kingdom to you. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, 5, and 6. All right, here we go. Amen. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Amen. So there's thoughts out there, right? There's thoughts in the, in the minds of men and the minds of women, right? That are against the knowledge of God. Amen. There are thoughts out there, right? That are exalting themselves against the knowledge of God, right? There are imaginations out there, right? That are coming against the kingdom of God and are coming against the knowledge of God. Well, where are they coming from? Verse 6 says, And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience, when your obedience is fulfilled. These imaginations, these high things, these thoughts, amen, that are fighting and warring against the kingdom of God, right? They are flowing through the spirits of disobedience. They are flowing through individuals who are disobedient. Amen. And that's why scripture says, when you are obedient, when your obedience is fulfilled, then revenge all this disobedience. How? Well, by fighting in the warfare. By fighting in the warfare through the Lord, through the Spirit of God, and praying against these things, and casting down these things. Amen. And revenge the disobedience. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 20. For if after 
They have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So how did they escape the pollutions of the world? Well, through the knowledge of the Lord, right? And if they had this knowledge of the Lord to escape the pollutions of the world, right? Well, they were walking in the fear of the Lord, right? Because they had holiness, right? And they had holiness because they feared the Lord, right? Because that's what Scripture says would happen. So after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, after they walked in the fear of the Lord, after they had the knowledge of the Lord, amen, they are again entangled therein. Entangled into what? Well, entangled back into the world. Entangled back into the pollutions of the world. The love of the world. The lust of the eyes. The lust of the flesh. The pride of life. The things of the world. The entertainment. When they are entangled therein again and overcome, you can be saved. You can walk in holiness. You can walk with the Lord. But you can still be entangled. And you can still be overcome. And scripture says if that happens to you, the latter end is worse than the beginning. The latter part of your life will be a living hell. Amen. Because the devil and the spirits will get back into you. And they will entangle you. And they will yoke you. And they will put you into bondage to the elements of this world. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So we're in a fight. We have to wrestle. We have to fight. Amen. And we fight against spiritual wickedness in high places. And we fight against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Oh, they're out there floating around in the atmosphere, right? And we should walk around and say, Oh, I walk into this place in the name of Jesus. I take authority over here. If there's any spirits in this house and any spirits in this building, I command you to go away from here in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, uh, spiritual warfare. What a mockery. What a disgusting mockery in the spiritual realm that's going on. Amen. Hallelujah. Our battle, our warfare, right, is internal to us. Amen. Internal to every man. Amen. It doesn't matter if the spirits are living in the trees or living in the sneeze. Amen. It doesn't matter where these spirits are. Amen. The warfare, the battle, right, it's internal. The battle is in the spirit. Amen. And that's why we learn through Scripture, right, that it's within the mind. Amen. Within the imagination. Amen. Right within the thoughts, amen, of men and women, doctrines of devils, false precepts of the kingdom, false thoughts of the kingdom, amen, operating and living and abiding in the mind of men and women. That's where the fight is. These false precepts and false concepts of the kingdom brought forth by doctrines of devils, right, and teachings of men, right, well, their imagination. As 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 says, casting down imaginations, their imaginations about the kingdoms, their imaginations about the kingdom of God and about what God requires and about what God's kingdom is about. But worse than that, right? Because attached to these imaginations, right, are high things. Attached to these imaginations are these spiritual wicked entities that we call demons. And that we call demonic spirits, amen. They are attached to these imaginations. And in these imaginations, right, they exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. Whatever the reality is, whatever the truth of the kingdom of God is, right, well, they make up a falsehood. They make up an imagination of the kingdom. And they, they, they attach themselves to that imagination. And they begin to exalt that imagination. And they begin to have people exalt and worship that imagination. These imaginations, these thoughts, right? These high things, right? They exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. But if you don't have the knowledge of God, right? Then you don't see the imagination. And if you don't have the knowledge of God, right? Then you can't see the high thing. And you can't fight the high thing. And you can't war against the high thing. Because you lack the knowledge of God. And why would you lack the knowledge of God? Well, because you're being disobedient to the Lord. Amen. 
because you're not walking in the fear of the Lord. Amen. And you're not separating yourself and you're not consecrating yourself. Amen. So because you're not doing the first things of the kingdom, right? The first precepts, precepts of the kingdom, right? Well, God's not going to use you. God's not going to call you. And there's no need for warfare for you. Why? You're already losing. You're already dying. Amen. Because you don't fear God. And you think you can play with the world. And you can think you can touch the things of the world. And you think that you can do evil deeds in the flesh, right? And it's going to be okay. And God's going to cover you. And you think you can worship the things of the world. And worship the people of the world. Amen. By wearing their clothing. Amen. And wearing their styles. Amen. And listening to their music. Amen. And you think it's okay before the Lord, but it's not. It's part of you not separating yourself from the world. And it's part of you not consecrating yourself to the Lord. Amen. And because you do these things right, you find yourself without power. You find yourself without the Lord, without the Spirit of God inside of you, but having a form of godliness, but no power thereof. Amen. Just a knowledge of the kingdom, stories of the kingdom. Amen. But the kingdom is far from you. Amen. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So scripture saying, you have to bring into captivity every thought. Well, you know what it means to bring something into captivity? It's going to be a fight there, right? Something has to transpire there, right? That thought, amen. That imagination, amen. That knowledge, amen. That high thing, amen. That's exalting itself against the knowledge of God, that has to be brought into captivity, into the obedience of Christ. To the obedience of Christ, Scripture says, but if you are not obeying Christ, if you are not obeying the ways of the kingdom, if you are not obeying the leading of the Spirit, amen, you can never, ever, ever bring those thoughts into captivity. Because first of all, you will not even see the thoughts. You will not even see the imaginations. This is the hook and the way the enemy works. Amen. He will get you to believe these imaginations. He will get you to believe these thoughts. Amen. And because you accept them, and because you believe them, right? Well, it will produce fruit in your life. It will produce belief systems in your life. And because you don't have the knowledge of God inside of you, you cannot discern what is right and wrong. You cannot discern what is the kingdom of God and what is not the kingdom of God. And this is not God's fault. Amen. This is our fault. Amen. Why? Well, because we refuse to surrender our will. And we refuse to separate and consecrate and live holy and live separated before the Lord. In the fear of the Lord, amen. So that we can be filled with the knowledge of God and we can be filled with the Spirit of the Lord, amen. The more you surrender of your heart, the more the Lord will live in there. The more the Lord will take over. The more the Lord will control you. But when we refuse to do so and we play with religion and we play with the stories of the Bible, but we don't do what the kingdom tells us to do, amen. Well, we suffer the consequences. And we suffer what Jesus warned us about. Amen. And spiritual warfare is real. Amen. And it's the Lord's will that we enter therein. Amen. And fight for the lost. And fight for those who are being held by these imaginations. 